All right, we're going to continue with picturesque journeys, and now we are going to talk about another artist. Like Callow, the American artist Georgia O'Keeffe was deeply influenced by her cultural background and her travels. I do want to point out that this paragraph shows how they are alike, especially with their cultural backgrounds, not meaning they have the same background, but they were being influenced by their backgrounds and their culture and they were influenced by their travels. O'Keefe was born in 1887 in the rural, which is like, like a, you probably think of farming, not very many people, a rural town of Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Her parents were dairy farmers. Dairy is, um, so these probably, they're going to be milking cows, producing milk, probably cheese, that type of thing of Irish and Hungarian backgrounds. Irish means you're from Ireland. Hungarian, again, just like Kahlo, it, it means from the country Hungary. Um, O'Keefe grew up in a farmhouse surrounded by trees, wildflowers, and grasslands. O'Keefe was surrounded by a big family, but she was quiet and independent. Growing up, she enjoyed spending long hours observing, which means watching and looking at, the natural environment. When she was in eighth grade, O'Keefe decided to become a painter. She took art lessons and began to focus on flowers as one of her favorite subjects. She was fascinated by their soft colors and irregular forms. This early experience strongly influenced her paintings years later. And this is a actual photograph of her right here. And this is one of her paintings. It might be explained later on in the text. After high school, O'Keefe decided to study painting at the Art Institute of Chicago in Illinois. After further study in New York, she spent some time as a teacher at West Texas A&M University. There, she first saw the Palo Duro Canyon near Amarillo, Texas. It would become an important landscape in her paintings. Paragraph 19, O'Keeffe's style and ideas about art took a turn, which means changed, in 1912, when she attended a summer school class at the University of Virginia. There, she was inspired by the ideas of Arthur Wesley Dow, I do not know this artist, who believed that artists should express themselves using color, lines, and shading. This was very different from the realistic style of painting known as realism that O'Keeffe had studied until then. As a result, the young artist found a new way to share her feelings and ideas through her art. In 1915, she began a series, which means a group of, play, she's multiple paintings, of abstract drawings. Abstract means, if you're, I'm pretty sure Ms. Shouse has talked to you about it, um, you can't really exactly tell what it is. It's not an exact drawing. Oh, here it just says this. Abstract art, <laughs> I should have just read on, is a painting or other art form that doesn't try to show people, places, or things in a realistic way. The new style of these artworks represented her breakup with realism. She, soon she became one of the first American artists to practice a purely abstract style of art. The famous photographer and art gallery owner, Alfred Stieg Stieglitz, saw O'Keeffe's abstract drawings and was very impressed. In 1916, in New York City, Stieglitz opened the first exhibit, which is a showing, of O'Keeffe's work. Eventually, Stieglitz and O'Keefe began a personal relationship as well. In 1924, Stieglitz and O'Keefe were married and they lived in New York. Oh, here we go. Here's one of her paintings. This one is called Petunias. She did this in 1924. 
Living in New York City, O'Keefe was captivated, which means like she was like an OMG, I can't believe I'm seeing this, by skyscrapers. She made these tall buildings the subjects of such paintings as the Shelton with Sunspots, New York City Night, and the Radiator Building Night New York. O'Keefe spent summers at her husband's family home in the village of Lake George in the Adirondack Mountains of New York. While there, she began to making large-scale paintings of nature at close range, as if she were looking through a magnifying glass. In 1924, she made her first large-scale flower painting, Petunia No. 2. There were many more giant, expressive, and colorful flowers to come. So that is one of her first. So these are really big paintings. Here's another one of her paintings. It is called Red and Yellow Cliffs. It was painted in 1940. All right, let's see what's going on with this. O'Keeffe's curious nature led her to travel often. In the late 1920s, so that is um, right now, that would be a little over 100 years ago, or a little less than 100 years ago, she became fascinated. We've heard that word before, fascinated, and she's just like, oh my goodness, what's going on? With the landscapes of the Southwest. In the deserts of New Mexico, she found rough terrain, that's the earth, with monumental rocks, so huge rocks and animal bones that were partly buried in the arid, which is dry, ground. See, she also admired the distinct local art and the unique style of adobe architecture. All right, so let me explain this sentence. She admired, which means she really liked, the local art and the unique style of adobe architecture. Adobe is the way um, a lot of the original buildings were made in New Mexico and Mexico and other cities, um, like, or no, I'm sorry, other countries in um, Central America. Um, they are square, usually more square shaped and made out of like a clay. Soon O'Keefe began to spend almost all of her time in the Southwest. In New Mexico, she felt inspired and felt a new freedom to paint. In 1934, O'Keefe bought a home in New Mexico in the desert, so often she painted. Then, after 1946, O'Keefe decided to move to New Mexico permanently. Okay, so before she just had a house that she visited often, but then she moved there permanently. O'Keeffe's famous paintings of New Mexico include Black Cross, New Mexico, Cow's Skull with Calico Roses. Oh, sorry, and, so those are two separate ones. She said of the Southwest, to me, it's the best place in the world. Paragraph 27, O'Keeffe took many exploratory drives across the Southwest. So she was exploring. After one of her trips, she said, such a beautiful, untouched, lonely feeling place. It is a place I have painted before. Even now I must do it again. O'Keefe continued traveling and discovering new places. Some of her artwork reflected these journeys. She painted lava bridges in Hawaii, the mountain peaks of Peru, and Mount Fuji in Japan. O'Keefe was attracted to big open spaces, so her work often includes paintings of clouds and endless skies. O'Keefe's paintings were oversized flowers, cityscapes, rugged landscapes, remote hills, lonely crosses, and images of bones against the desert sky. So oversized flowers means just really huge flowers. Cityscapes, which means um, like probably lots of skyscrapers and buildings. Rugged landscapes would be kind of like the one you see here, like a desert, mountains. Um, remote hills, so hills um, would be with no one around them. Lonely crosses, 
and images a bone in a, against the desert sky. So some bones and some crosses. Though, oh, through them, O'Keeffe greatly influenced other artists of the 20th century. Today, her paintings can be found in museums all across the country, including one dedicated solely to her work, the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum in Santa Fe, New Mexico. O'Keeffe lived and worked in, Ab I'm not even going to try, Abing, I shouldn't say it, from, oh, from 1949 to 1984. So this is her, a real photograph. Here's one of her paintings, and she's outside. There's the picture of New Mexico. Um, this is the city that she's in. Santa Fe um, is right here. And you can see where it is in the United States. And I'm gonna stop the video here before we talk about the next artist.